electronic music podcast. Are you live? We are live. Oh, cool. Wow. This is oh, it. Yeah. Here wow. we are. This is the voice of electronic music. This is so episode weird. Episode 18. I'm hearing myself. <laughs> <laughs> With uh, Elaine Huang? Yes. Yeah. Elaine Huang. You got it right because it's not Huang, okay? It's uh, Huang. <laughs> that was, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, you got I, it right. I tried. <laughs> How you doing? I am doing good yeah. on this fancy Sunday afternoon. Oh, it's amazing. And they canceled amazing. the party because they thought it was going to rain. But no, it's not raining today. Oh, I didn't FYI. even realize that. Not mm -hmm. only is it not raining, it's like 65 here in San Francisco, which is incredible. Rare. And rare and amazing. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good day to do a podcast. And uh, it's, a, it's warm in here, but I'm actually kind of embracing it. Yes. It feels good. It's warm. It's like... I'm okay with it. So it's usually foggy and rainy, and and plus, I, like, I love, love, love this job, but I somehow landed the one job in San Francisco that runs AC in San Francisco at night. <laughs> so it, I'm it, always up there yes. in the booth, like freezing, just like shivering, like. <laughs> and we're hot out there on the dance floor. And everyone else is dancing <laughs> and sweating. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. I have a blanket. Yes. <laughs> Um, so yeah, how you doing? You doing good? Yes, thanks for having me on. It's sure. awesome to be here without all the people yes. for once. It's yeah, crazy, right? It's super nice. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's fun. So Elaine, uh, for those of you that doesn't don't know, uh, does uh, Neon Owl, um, which is a uh, a blog and a interview platform. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. We started off as... Bleh, there you go. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we started off as a blog. We created content. Then eventually we really branched off and started doing events. A lot of collaborations with artists, uh, festivals to raise money for different charities around the world. And then uh, we also have merchandise, so nice. charity merchandise. And then recently we got into artist development as well. So where we launched open door sessions, networking events, so on and so forth. Right. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, yeah. So you sent me that uh, that little uh, cheat sheet, which was very nice. Yes. Uh, very handy. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. People get confused. Yeah. I do so many different things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's always good. Um, and usually, you know, if, if I don't have that, I usually end up having to like, you know, go on people's Facebook yeah. and like, you know, research <laughs> and stuff. Um, but uh, that's cool. So you uh, you left your job to to start uh, Neon Owl with the, with your brother, or you do you do uh, the other stuff with your brother? You do the um, or both? No. So I do both. So my, I have my coaching and consulting business where I work right. with people on building brands. Yeah. Um, but that's on my own. Yeah. My brother and I we started Neon Owl together. He's more the back end guy. So shout out Ray if you're watching. Uh, he's the guy that does all the other stuff that I suck at, like yeah. back end website, like merch, and I'm like the, let's go out there and talk to people. <laughs> so we both were going to a lot of festivals together. Mm -hmm. So uh, siblings that rave together stay together. Mm. Uh, so we, so we were going Great. to a lot of festivals together. And um, I just thought it would be amazing to start something in the music industry where we can connect music and philanthropy. Mm. And so I was like, hey, what do you think of this idea? He was like, Sounds cool. And so <laughs> and so we both started doing it together. Uh, he kept his job in tech and then I mm -hmm. quit my job and nice. yeah, went like all in. All in. Yeah. That's what you got to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So when you say, uh, I think the first half of that was a little bit more uh, uh, easy to understand. But when you say philanthropy, um, are you talking about giving back to the community or? or, or? Yeah, giving back to the community. Um, really, I didn't start I love the music always I love all music literally from like hip hop to electronic music like country. Chinese music you like country uh, new country okay, so like pop sure. country yes yeah. um, so I love all music but when I started going to festivals I was like there's something really different about the culture in dance music mm. um, just like this really accepting like like vibe like family community creativity right. um, and so I just fell in love with the festival scene mm -hmm. ever since I started going in my, I think I was 24. So a good seven years ago, I just fell in love with the scene and I found out how much money was in the industry, like the, mu the electronic music industry. And of right. course you see all these people at festivals, like tickets costing like a hundred bucks, $300, $400, $500. And I saw like companies here and they're like giving back, but I was like at the, 
amount of money and the rate that this industry is growing, there should be way more. Right. And I also saw an opportunity because a lot of DJs, unlike pop stars or rock stars, they're not really known. You know mm -hmm. them for their tracks, but they don't actually, you don't super know them. And sure, so yeah. I saw an opportunity to start doing interviews where I could ask them about the causes that they care about. And nice. like what got them started to really inspire others to follow their dreams and to leverage their influence to do something good. That's cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. 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 Very similar to, to what I'm doing here. I, I tend to get into the really nitty gritty, like, uh, like I want to talk to them about, you know, uh, their, 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 uh, synthesizer presets and yeah. like <laughs> how they do all <laughs> that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's fun. Uh, so, uh, what, what are, um, what are some of your like favorite festivals that that, uh, that you've gone to? Um, so my first festival was EDC. Nice. So that was like it was not starting me out slow. My brother, he was like, "Hey, you should come to like EDC," and I'm like, "Uh," yeah. <laughs> I was like, "I don't know. That seems kind of crazy for my first festival." No. Right. And he was like, "I already got your ticket." I was like, "All right, I guess I'm going." <laughs> so of course that festival has a place in my heart. Yeah. Um, I've done a bunch of other ones. I wouldn't say I have a favorite. I would say EDC is special because it's like my first exposure to music festivals. Mm -hmm. So I like that. Uh, we're headed to Coachella in two weeks, 10 days or so, two weeks. Um, and yeah, I just like going to shows yeah. in general. So I love not festivals. really like a favorite. I'm, yeah, I'm a huge festival person. Yeah, I, what's I like, your favorite? Uh, um, I think my favorite is Lightning in a Bottle. Okay, we want to go this year. It's yeah, I've never incredible. Been. Yeah, yeah, so good. Uh, symbiosis, of course, mm -hmm. is awesome. Uh, very similar, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, yeah. but but different. Um, and then I'm going to be doing Burning Man this year for the first time. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, last year was yeah. my first one. Yeah? Yeah, last year was my first one. How was it? You liked it? It was, um, I didn't know what to expect, but sure. it exceeded all my expectations, if that, there were any. That's what they say. It's very yeah. different, though. Very different from, like, like festivals. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. interesting. Um, I'm excited. I, I can't wait. I, I'm, I'm, do you have I, a camp? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do okay. have a camp. I cool. think we're going with, uh, oh shit, what's the name of it? Uh, Iceberg Cowboys. Cool. Yeah, and I, I know, like, I, I always tell people, like, oh yeah, it's gonna, I'm going to Burning Man for the first time, and they're like, oh my god, you know, and but I, and I, I tell them like, I, I've been to a lot of festivals. I've yeah. been in the industry. I've camped, and I, and I know like, uh, there's a bunch of stuff that I haven't uh, experienced there that I will course have my mind blown by um but uh i really do feel like i i i kind of are, have almost already been there yeah. because all of my friends are burners i've thought about it so much i've read so much about it i've seen so many <laughs> yeah. photos and videos you know yeah um, well, we'll but see you there this year yeah, yeah yeah it's exciting yeah um actually you know one thing i will say i miss beyond wonderland mm. bay area oh so that like they i don't think they have it anymore right. but they had it here there's a bunch yeah. that have kind of come and gone like yeah. uh uh, Love Illusion, which was Love Fest, mm -hmm. or Love Parade. Um, yeah. That was a good one. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. They're always kind of, uh, you know, it's a cyclical thing, these festivals. And I'm glad when, when they stick around for a long time. Like, you know, uh, Lightning in a Bottle's been, mm -hmm. I think, you know, 14 years or something. Uh, Burning Man, I don't even I don't even know. Probably. Many, many yeah, years. since like the 70s <laughs> or 80s or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's cool. And, you know, wh wh when you were talking about... Uh, uh, you know, uh, when you when you looked at how much money goes into a lot of these things, um, it's really pretty fascinating. I mean, you know, a lot of these festivals are, are multi, multi-million dollar productions, mm -hmm. you know, and it's uh, very intensive. And a lot of people here in uh, in the Bay Area that are my friends, uh, you know, and uh, our friends, uh, they do, they go early, they set up, they do the production. They, you know, a lot of my friends are the, the guys sitting there, you know, t tuning the sound yeah. and uh, doing the lights and all that stuff. Um, so it really kind of makes you feel like like it's more than just like you're just like attending. You're like, oh, this is like a family affair mm -hmm. type thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's interesting. And, you know, as far as, you know, money in, in the industry, it's uh, I, I've found it fascinating, too, because, you know, there's so many people that do electronic music. They make electronic music. They're DJs, whatever. Um, and it's this weird thing where it's kind of like it's it, there's not a lot of money until you reach some level mm -hmm. where all of a sudden there is money, you know? And it's like, it's different than, you know, uh, owning a bakery or, um, you know, having some store or shop or, or business like that where you can, you know, have these little things and you can kind of, you know, uh, you know, uh, bake cakes and that sort of thing and make enough to like it by. Um, but I just find it interesting that in the music industry in a lot of ways, um, it's kind of like devoid of, of money until you, you know, hit some sort of, 
notoriety? You yeah. Know, whether uh, you're a festival or, or, or a DJ or whatever. I would say definitely not an industry to get into if your purpose is to make money. Yes. But yeah. there is money to be made. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if, if you work your ass off. Absolutely. And maybe, not, not, not guaranteed. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you really do. It, it kind of, uh, it kind of uh, <laughs> calls the herd to a certain degree. You know, yeah. it's like, uh, how, how much do you really want to do this? Because if, you know, a lot of people will just do things for money and can't really do that no. in this industry. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get into the music industry for? Make money? No. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. I would have kept my job. <laughs> exactly, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, how, did, uh, how did you kind of get started? Have you always been, you know, uh, kind of uh, a socialite that likes to talk to people and, and interview people or... Yeah, I, well, I like to talk. Uh, I like sure. to talk and I'm, I would say I'm fairly outgoing. I've always been an extrovert for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always loved music, like mm. music, travel, people, charity. Those are like my main jams. Yeah. However, I had mentioned that I never thought music could be a career for me mm. because when I was young, I, I like took violin lessons out the door, uh, like keyboard out the door, clarinet. So, so all the things I did that were music related and definitely can't sing. So yeah. catch me at karaoke. You'll be like, what? <laughs> so I never was musically talented. So automatically I was like, well, music's cool, but there's no way I could have a career in music. Mm. And I just kind of somehow thought that, but music was my escape. It was my savior. It was like all those like positive, got me through positive times, negative times, all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when I was in my mid to late twenties, really when I was at my last company, uh, solar and construction, I was VP at that company. And when they like talked to me about becoming a partner, I was like, ooh, this is kind of like you either marry this company now mm -hmm. and you're kind of stuck. Or it was kind of like those middle quarter life crisis things sure. where what do I want to do with my life? Like, what do, what do I want to do when I grow up? I've had a few of those. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> and so around that time, I had been going to festivals for a few years already. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, maybe there's an opportunity for me to leverage my people skills, like my communication skills to mm -hmm. create something, to create community, to create connection and bring people together. Mm -hmm. So whether that means like talking to the more established people that's like made money, right? So they can leverage their audience and their influence to do something or whether that's to help the up and coming like dreamers, right? Whether you're looking to be a promoter or a DJ or a producer. So I just saw like this like window of opportunity to maybe leverage my skills, even though I suck at everything music, <laughs> music, music related to do something in the industry. Yeah. So, yeah. That's really kind of what it is, though, <laughs> is, is uh, just kind of recognizing what you're best at and just just doing it. I mean, you know, I think everyone kind of if, if you're into anything, uh, any particular thing, and you're kind of like, oh, well, I want to do something there. But like, what do I do? Yeah. You just kind of pick something. You just start doing it. And it might not even be the, the thing that you end up doing forever or whatever. You know, uh, when I when I got started with music and <clears throat> I mean, I, I started making music when I was like, you know, 19. Um, uh, and I kind of just, I had no idea. I didn't even know like what live sound was yeah. or I had, didn't, had no concept of festivals or uh, whatever. I didn't even really have the, the, pr the correct concept of what it was to, to be a DJ. Mm -hmm. um, I thought DJs were just like, just played on the radio and that was it. Yeah. You know? um, but you know, you kind of just, you just like a cruise ship or something. You just put, you point yourself in the right direction. You just kind of like start heading that way, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and you kind of figure it out. And like, I, I, I did that. And now I'm, you know, uh, working at you know, one of the better nightclubs here in San Francisco. One and of the best. DJ. <laughs> and, yeah, my favorite. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just interesting how, how life just kind of, uh, just, uh, assimilates itself in a certain way. Once you kind of put the right energy out there and, and, yeah. uh, and figure it out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And like, I literally was, I was in over my head. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and for the longest time, I was like, Ugh. like, here I am, brand new. I don't know anyone in the music industry. Like, right. when I started, it's not like I knew you and you and yeah, you. Yeah. It's, it wasn't like that. It was more of like, cool, I have this vision, this passion to create something. I'm going to be, like, naive as fuck. Like, right. can I, I curse in here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be naive and just, like, knock on doors. You asked me the other day. You're like, how do you get interviews? Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude. 
I just knocked on a shit ton of doors and doors mm -hmm. meaning like Facebook messages, like emails, like this person's contact, that person's contact. And I was like, hey, my name's Elaine. Like I run this thing called Neon Owl and this is what it's about. I'd love to interview you and talk about something maybe a little different than right. usual. And oftentimes crickets, <laughs> uh, sometimes no, yeah. sometimes like, well, how many readers do you have? And sometimes it's like, oh, sounds like that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. I would like to do an interview with you. Yeah. And that's how it started. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I feel like that might be uh, <laughs> might be valuable for people that uh, are kind of in that place that, uh, you know, uh, we both were at one point, you know, trying to break into a scene. Um, I, I've talked to, I've had like Reddit conversations about this on, on you know, like the DJ yeah. subreddit or whatever. Um, and, you know, I always tell people like uh, I, I was in the same place where it's like I knew that I had wanted to like kind of be in the music scene, you know, and to kind of do what I love uh, here, especially in San Francisco, um, but had no idea really how to. And uh, for me, what I did was I, I kind of I had a buddy that was, you know, really into electronic music yeah. as well. Um, and we had been going to these parties and that sort of thing. And at one point, we we're just like, you know what? I, I'm having a difficulty getting booked. You know, because I don't have any experience. One of those catch twenty twos, like you know, you yeah. gotta have experience to, yeah. to get booked. <laughs> um, so uh, what I did is I, I kind of did the same thing that you did. I just started knocking on doors, but like uh, I was going around to like bars, mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, uh, we want to throw a party here, and so we started doing these like uh, weekly, you know, it was a weekly party out at Milk Bar. Yeah. Um, and oh, cool. and doing something like that, I think I think for me, I realized that. If you're trying to get into something, anything, uh, where you have no uh, experience, and this could be a job even or whatever, you got to have something to offer, right? And so for me, it was like, okay, well now I've, I've established this this thing with you know uh, a relationship with this bar, and they said I can come here and play music. Well, now I have something to offer people, mm -hmm. and now I can just hit these people up and be like, hey, you know, want to you know uh, you know yeah. uh, have you play? And then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, you want me to play? Of course, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing with, with yeah. this. You know, it's like you're contacting people, and, and you're you uh, want to get their take on X Y Z thing, and you know. Um, it's, uh, I think a lot of people, especially when you're a, a DJ or a producer, like you were saying, we're kind of behind the scenes. Um, and I, I think it's nice uh, to kind of have someone be curious as to like, what's on your mind? And mm -hmm. like, you know, what you think about certain things. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's cool. And yeah. I, I like that you do, you do, I mean, I, I try not to call this an interview because I, I like to think of it much more of just like a conversation. It's a chat. It's a <laughs> chat, yeah. <laughs> we chat. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. So, um, and then you, uh, after Neon Owl, you, you kind of uh, started doing open sessions, right? Open door sessions. Oh, open door uh, sessions, yeah. A while after, actually, because Neon Owl is officially four years old. Mm. So four years old, um, and we started off doing the content first, right? The charity march, the shows. And then at first, I was targeting artists that were like bigger, like more established, mm -hmm. just because that's how you get the message out there, right? Like, for example, if I interviewed an artist with 50 followers, not that I don't like them, I totally find new artists all the time, right? Like, sure. because, oh, like this person has like three followers, but a dope ass track. So I'm really passionate about that. However, at the same time, if you want to create more impact, right, like about Charity X or Charity Y, mm -hmm. that person needs to have X amount of like, like followers or yes. be established in order for us to actually raise money sure. for that charity. And so at first we were targeting like bigger artists and festivals and collaborations. And then over time, I would find these artists that I really love. Like I remember maybe about three years ago, I found uh, these artists on SoundCloud, Bose, mm. and they're two brothers. Uh, we're really we're really good friends now. And I was like, wow, they have these like sick ass like remixes. And so one of them flew out to New York and he met up with me, Johan, and like we actually ended up booking them for one of our charity shows. And around that time, it was like two and a half, three years ago, I started becoming more and more interested in featuring up and coming artists hmm. that weren't established. They didn't have a huge fan base. And then sometimes we would like leverage maybe some of the other connections we have, or maybe connect them with some other artists that are more established to help them get like signed or mentor them. And then I just had this like huge passion around helping like promoters and DJs that haven't quite yet made it yet, mm -hmm. but they want to make those connections. Sure. And then I was like, huh, well, I think there's a huge need in the industry to connect the dots mm. between DJ, producer, like vocalist, talent buyer, oh, uh, yeah, like radio, sure. like all these different pieces. Yeah. And I realized at that point, 
like after a year, two years, three years of doing this, I'm starting to know more and more people. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think someone joked and said, hey, you're like the the matchmaker, right? Like whatever (laughs) matchmaker, right? And Uh, so I had this idea to start Open Door Sessions mm -hmm. about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And then we finally launched it last December. So about 15 months ago. They're like these in-person events. They're fairly intimate, about mm, 100 people or so, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more. We had like 120 last time in Oakland where we bring in special guests. Like they can be like radio hosts. They can be like talent buyers, like like Northern Knights or like Trans Family. And then they come here and share their experiences, Hmm. like creating their businesses their vision and then we'll bring in more established artists as well to teach things about like like scratching or mixing or production and we brought in Greg from Paramount last time oh, to yeah. come t- teach like Ableton Live so it's been these like super awesome intimate like networking events but not networking I don't really like that word right yeah. you just just like you don't like interview yeah. <laughs> so people just come here and hang out in one space they get access to people that they normally might not get access to mm-hmm and knowledge that they normally might not have access to. Um, And they've been super awesome so far. We've had a couple artists have their track signed onto uh, Armada, uh, Reaching Altitude, Grotesque, from coming to our events. So that started 15 months ago, and we're about to launch Open Door Sessions virtual right now because we obviously can't bring it to every single city. (laughs) Uh, So we're launching Open Door Sessions LA, uh, New York, Europe in 2020 and then we're launching virtual in the next few months. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you could have like a, a, like a business just on what you were saying, like connecting vocalists and, and producers and, you know, session players and all this stuff. Cause that like as a, as a musician myself, that's kind of the most, one of the most difficult things. I mean, I can make sounds all day long. I can, you know, uh, We'll sit in my studio and you know uh, play around with with uh, synthesizers yeah. forever, um, but you know trying to find uh, you know sift through the the weeds as far as like all the various uh, you know uh, talent that's out there and find people that are you know it's just like anything it's like you know people, someone might be into it but then they're too busy or whatever and mm-hmm. so finding people that are really kind of like you know a hundred percent hundred and twenty percent into what they do and are yeah. you know kind of uh, I feel like that you could have a whole the whole business just on yeah, that. Yeah, and I realized that a lot of, uh, I learned that a lot of producers are introverts. They're yeah. like, hey, I'm just like a lonely bedroom producer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, go out there and talk to people. Right, yeah. <laughs> so at the, when they come to our events, open door sessions, it's, it's like really warm, it's really inviting. So like their introverted self becomes a little more <laughs> extroverted. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Nice. It's kind yeah. of like a, it seems like a really inviting space yeah. too where... Uh, anytime you go somewhere where you know that everyone's kind of into what you're doing as well, it's yeah. like, oh, okay, well, these people are all like me. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, what uh, w- what are your hopes with uh, Open Door Sessions Virtual? Like, is it are you wanting it to be a place where kind of uh, people can connect online and then also get like training and and that sort of thing, or what's the main focus? Yeah. So, just as like anything else we've done, like there's always like a vision mm-hmm. and there's always a plan, but then as you progress, it takes a different direction, right? Mm. Like I didn't think of open door sessions virtual when it first began, but then we would live stream, you know, these Ableton production, DJing, like marketing 101, how to brand yourself, how to, how to network and not look like an ass. (laughs) So all these different topics and we would live stream on our Facebook and people from literally like Kansas or Seattle or Hawaii or somewhere in Europe or Asia would be like, oh my gosh, like, can I submit my demo? And we're like, no, you have to be present. Mm. Or like, oh my gosh, can I do this? Or like, how do I attend or come to my city? And so we realized that even though like the Bay Area really needs this, which is why we started it here, um, the impact that it could have on so many people, whether you're from Mexico or like New York, is so much greater. Mm. And even though they're not in-person events, it's like, it's still a closed community. Mm -hmm. We're still going to have class like at least twice a week, at least a minimum of one like technical class. Mm -hmm. So like DJing or production. And then one will be focused more on the business side of things like Mm -hmm. branding, marketing, uh, social media, contracts, Uh. uh, all those other things. So that whether you're a producer or you're a promoter, there's something in it for everyone. Yeah. And then like my intention is just to grow this community like bigger and bigger so that people can be connected with 
like like-minded creatives all over the world. Right. Yeah. I feel like that's such a, a, a unknown thing for a lot of producers and people in this industry is the music business side of things because mm-hmm. nobody really talks about it all that much and nobody really teaches it. Like yeah. even if you go to school for it, um, I had Greg from Peer Mind yeah. uh, on here last week and uh, they have you know kind of music uh, business courses, which is uh, really nice to see. I went to school at Expression, yeah. um, which was amazing. You know, I learned a lot of great stuff, but they kind of didn't go far enough into the music business stuff that I would have liked. Yeah. And it's kind of like, uh, I kind of feel like it's almost like any school, uh, really. I mean, you know, you think of cl- your classic, you know, uh, elementary, high school, and then college, like a lot of them aren't teaching you like uh, how, how to do your taxes or, mm-hmm. you know, no. uh, kind of like, uh, you know. How to not get your ass sued. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Like all these, the, all these various things, you know. Yeah. Like, um, and, and I feel like that stuff is really crucial, you know. And, yeah. Um, so that's cool. I like that. Uh, and I like that uh, you're kind of taking it upon yourself to, to make that happen. Yeah. It uh, hasn't how, been easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that much. Yeah, right. So how many, how many, <laughs> how many people, <laughs> uh, it's always the, the most gory way to oh imagine killing yourself, <laughs> stabbed in the heart. You got to be really emo to stab yourself oh in the heart. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So uh, how many how many people do you have? Uh, is it just you and your brother? So my brother and I started Neon Owl, and we have been fortunately blessed mm-hmm. to have a shit ton of volunteers. Like mm. ever since we started, and we started the charity stuff, a lot of people would like find us or meet one of our friends and like ambassadors at events, and we've just had an overwhelming amount of support, people reaching out, wanting to like volunteer mm-hmm. at the merch booth or open door sessions and, you know, be a writer for us. So we have a ton of volunteers mm. and that's fortunately and unfortunately because we wouldn't be able to do it without like all the people that come early to help us set up, so on and so forth, right? And then the, the grand scheme of things, there's so much work and dedication that needs to go into this Mm. that you know volunteers are great like one-offs here and there but it takes like a shit ton of commitment to actually launch something like a huge charity show or open door sessions virtual so you know we are looking to expand the team in the near future Mm -hmm. and we're looking for some like committed people that's passionate about the music industry that's passionate about making a difference. Nice. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, if you n- ever need anyone to uh, talk about uh, podcasting. Yes. Or, yes. Uh, or, <laughs> I know or, who to go or, to. Or mixing, <laughs> yeah, mixing and mastering. I can, yeah. uh, I, I can help you yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. So um, what are uh, like, what are you hoping to get into uh, in like, you know, the next couple of years? You want to say, what do you want to see Neon Owl grow into as well as uh, like, the, uh, we, you know, we already covered uh, open door sessions mm-hmm. virtual, but what about Neon Owl? Yeah, I consider Neon Owl, I consider it a movement. It's like a, it's a lifestyle brand. It's like a way of being. So for us, we focus, whether it's the content or open door sessions or the merchandise, it's always about people before profits or purpose before profits. So sure, at the end of the day, like you don't get into the music. I don't get into the music industry to make a shit ton of money. Mm -hmm. Although there's an opportunity, but I believe that the core of like who we are, it's always gonna focus on giving back and supporting others Mm -hmm. first, Mm -hmm. and then all let's make money, right? Like later as a secondary thing. So for me, I see Neon Owl growing. So reaching different cities, different countries, like different continents, and just really growing the Neon Owl family and same for Open Door Sessions. So to be able to create more impact, um, like grow our tribe and then just hopefully it already has, but hopefully continue to inspire others to start socially conscious companies. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Who are uh, who are some of your favorite people that you've you've worked? I don't I don't want to say favorite, <laughs> like, but like who are, like, dun, who are dun, some dun. of the most you've been excited about? You know, uh, had the best yeah. interviews with, or or the best uh, turnouts with your you know uh, charitable. Uh, yeah, events? Uh, I would say so. One that's always going to be special to both Ray and I is Andrew Rael. Mm. So he. Uh, like a few years ago when we started, well, many years ago, we started going to festivals and we became a big fan. And actually, it was like the beginning of the charity merchandise line. So we went to like an Andrew Ryle show, this is like years ago, where he opened up for Cosmic Gate. 
And we were like, yo, it'd be like super cool if we like made these like Andrew Rael shirts. So Ray, he like bought some ghetto ass like kit at <laughs> home and he printed the shirt. And I was like, yeah, man, we're gonna like give it to him. And like <laughs> super like fangirly, right? <laughs> and so we went to Fox Theater. I was like front row, usually front and middle. I'm like raging, right? Usually I'm on my friend like Samson's shoulders. And I like asked the security, I was like, hey, can you give him this shirt? It was some Andrew Rael, like Rael family shirt we, we printed. And the like security's a home, like, like a homemade, print, print, homemade shit. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> not, not, it's not the shit we sell now. It's like yeah, high yeah, quality yeah. stuff. But I was like, hey, can you give this to him? And he was like, no. <laughs> and I'm so glad he said no because at home, we washed it and all that shit came off. Oh, no. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, um, okay, well, I'm so glad I didn't give him that gift. That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> but fast forward, like, we printed like nice shirts mm -hmm. and then we would wear them. It was me and him and it was me, him and another friend and then another friend, and another friend. So then it would be like 10 of us then 15 of us and 25 of us then like 30 of us. Wow. Like wearing these Royal family shirts. And like, I, I just started using Instagram then. So all these like different people would like message me and say, how can I buy a shirt? And I'm like, well, it's not for sale because probably that's illegal to make money off of Andrew Rael, right? <laughs> and I was like, but you can come meet me here and I'll give you a shirt. And then they would give us like candy and like whatever else mm -hmm. or buy us a drink. I'm like, I don't drink. <laughs> and um, it started becoming like this thing, like this meetup. Eventually, like Andrew Rael actually took notice of that and he would like message me or like comment on our Instagram and our mm. Twitter and our Facebook and then we became friends wow and yeah. like that was like my vague vision was like to work with someone like him mm -hmm. because he seemed like a super nice dude and he is like after getting to know him and meet him he's like super nice and so finally one day I asked him and his manager, Roger, like, I was like, hey, so obviously you've seen our shirts like all over the world, literally. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and like, we always do these meetups and he would actually come and meet the fans too. It became like a thing. And I was like, I would love for you to be our first artist that we partner up with for the Dance Give Inspired Charity Line. So we've partnered up with a lot more now, like Marlo, like Groove Cruise, Trans Family. I was like, we would love for you to be the first artist. And like, I was like, oh my God, is he gonna say yes? Is he gonna say no? Like there's all these legal stuff, there's like all this stuff. And so he was like, it would be an honor. Wow. And so the moment I heard that, I was just like, it was so awesome. So that will always be a special artist for me mm. because we started going to festivals. We loved his music. We printed that ghetto ass shirt. Then we printed some nice shirts and then the tribe started growing. And he ended up being the first artist to sign with us for the charity line. Wow. Um, and I remember that at that point I was living in New York. So I started Neon Owl and I also moved to New York. And they were like, yeah, come shoot in like Montreal for this like festival that he was playing at. So like I like found some random dude on Craigslist. I was like, oh God, I got to find like a videographer. And then I remember being there. It was so stressful, but we had to shoot like the merchandise and the epic like sunset and everything. And it was so stressful when I was out there by myself. But in the moment, like the sunset was like setting and he had the shirt and he had the flag and then the video guy like got the shot and I was like, oh, it's all <laughs> worth it. So that's always gonna be like my favorite like collaboration because yeah. it's the first and it inspired a lot of like, like what happened at Neon Owl. Mm. Um, but of course there's a lot of other awesome people we love like Marlo, uh, Convex, Lavelle, who's in town right now, he always comes out mm -hmm. after like playing till like four, five, six a.m. He'll get up at like eight a.m. on Groove Cruise to come volunteer at the orphanage when we go and when Neon Al and Trans Family goes to like help Groove Cruise and Wet Foundation. Crazy, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I feel like uh, some of the best things start with some ghetto ass shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's true. We should quote that. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. You yeah, just, you know, like you just gotta get started, even if it starts with some ghetto ass <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. So yeah, it's like that's there's awesome. a lot of awesome like people that we've met along the way, mm. and it's been like super awesome. Like Bose, they're another one. They're the two brothers I mentioned earlier. Hmm. They, um, How do you spell that? Is it B, B, not B-O-S-E, so right? 
E A U Z. Oh, yeah, Z. Okay. So both, yeah. So the two brothers are from Taiwan, and they've been making strides in the last few years, and mm -hmm. they have some like really huge collaborations coming up mm -hmm. with like some really big artists. So wow. it's been super awesome to watch their growth, and they always come out to give back. Yeah. Like all of the events, they come out and the open door sessions. Like they'll support artists. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. I love that people are like excited to kind of you know give back a little bit and, yeah. and you know. Um, it's cool. I uh, I was thinking while you're talking about uh, you know um, Neon Owl and Open Door Sessions. I was kind of thinking about you know being at uh, Lightning in a Bottle or a lot of these festivals, and they're 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 doing uh, they've been doing these uh, not just you know stages and and uh, uh, you know. Uh, they're, they're doing these like talks now too mm -hmm. where you can I've been to ones where they're talking about Bitcoin or they're talking about like uh, you know various other things uh, esoteric things spiritual things whatever yeah. um, and I could definitely see kind of uh, you know uh, open door sessions uh, or even Neon Owl I mean talking about uh, you know uh, your helping artists kind of figure things out and kind of uh, I don't know if you're you do much with like the the legal side of things but that's kind of uh tricky too. I mean you could mm -hmm. do you could you could talk to people like forever about just like copyright issues and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. We covered that like a little bit. I mean, to me, I'm like, "Oh, are people going to be bored for like <laughs> contracts and stuff?" But no, people like no. they're interested cuz I'm like, "Would they want that?" Like, but no, we brought a music attorney last time. Wow. We brought like uh, Alan from the Fried Firm and he talked about like all the different ways and like contracts and things like that. Right. Um, and he's also helping us. Um, we're launching the Dance Give Inspire Foundation. So it's a nonprofit actually. Hmm. And he's sitting on our board of directors. And we met him through Ian, who's another artist that we met through another artist. So it's been super cool hmm. to just talk to like randoms and then they connect you to other randoms and then yeah. you end up doing stuff together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. so great. Um, what, uh, I feel like there's a big, uh, did you hear about that thing with Getter, uh, recently where yes. he canceled his, his, yes, uh, that was schedule? Sad. Yeah. His touring schedule. Um, it's, yeah. it's kind of upsetting. I just got, I didn't, I didn't read super deep about it, but what I gathered from it was he, he, uh, he played some, uh, started making a different kind of mm -hmm. type of music, a little bit, a little shift in his genre. Um, and I, apparently he played it out and, and people didn't uh, respond too well to it and were, were booing him and stuff. Yeah, and got, he got a bunch of like DMs like, I won't ever pay for your shows again. Like, Jeez, it's Christ. like, damn, chill. Like, yeah. people change, people evolve. Like, right. what do you, get what, with it. What, cause I, so I, I remember, I remember, you know, probably seven years ago now or eight years ago uh, when Avicii played Ultra mm -hmm. and he played uh, Hey Brother you know which I, I love you know mm -hmm. I love those tracks um, and it it Nobody, it, it, nobody was expecting that, right? And it has this kind of like country, yeah, inspired vibe to it. Country vocalist, you know, had a lot of guitar and stuff, um, and people were literally like leaving the stage and like booing, you know, which I found so fascinating because then fast forward many years later, it's the biggest song of you know uh, the, the past five years or whatever. You know, it made it to the radio and it was playing on the radio for, and it's like uh, it's it's kind of sad that uh, you know people wouldn't trust per se. I mean, I know that you should go to go to a show kind of expecting what you want to hear mm -hmm. and you have your favorites. Um, but, you know, electronic music is not top 40. You know, it's like the reason why I love electronic music and why I think a lot of people like electronic music versus top 40 or, or whatever is played on the radio or TV is the chance of discovery, right? It's like you go to these shows and you end up, you know, sh holding up your phone, shazamming, you know, like trying to, you know, yeah. or, or there's some like VIP edit that you, and you have your mind blown by these, by these new experiences. Um, so it was, it was kind of upsetting to me to, to, to see that. And of course for him, cause he has to like mentally deal with all that, you know, uh, kind of stuff. Where, where do you, where, where do you think that comes from? Do you have any well, first off this, uh, this like upsets me a good amount. Like, Mm, it's kind of like okay so it's like kind of like people that's like super just into one genre and like my genre is the best and your genre sucks right. like it's like music is so, like to me it's the universal language that connects us all mm. so to me it's like I feel like it's super narrow minded when it's like hey you make this type of music with this formula and if you steer away from it you're a fucking sellout right. like I, I get where that's coming from. It's like, okay, maybe you made it via this genre or these types of fans. Mm -hmm. 
And I've talked to a lot of artists about this before, like on and off record. And I'm like, hey, how does this make you feel? feel like when you get so much hate right like because as you get bigger right you kind of have to adapt to sur- to not survive but like as you start making it and then you start playing like main stage whatsoever sometimes your sound just like changes not so much to sell out but as an artist you want to keep making the same shit over and over again right you get and one song that works and you're like okay i'm gonna keep repeating it's like that. okay like, like yeah. all your sound all your songs sound the same sure. and so i've been this is literally like from an art a fairly big artist I talked to and he was like okay so in the beginning I when I started making it everyone's like hey all your shit sounds the same then he started shifting the type of music he was making right getting inspired by different sounds Mm. and then it's like oh you're a sellout (laughs) so there's like there's no winning in that right so that's why I feel forgetter and like him saying he'll never tour again which hopefully that's not true yeah but it's like just because I want to experiment with something new something different like I'm going to get bashed on by my old fans like so I don't know it just like it definitely upsets me and I hope that people understand how much that can actually affect someone Mm -hmm. like when you say that to right when a fan actually says your shit is trash and I'll never fucking come to your show again it's like like understand that someone's probably going through his own stuff you know he said he was going he was he did this tour to try to make himself feel better. Mm. A right? lot, like of, to lot make of musicians this music. struggle with, you know, like Avicii, you know, yeah. uh, depression. And I mean, it's Porter Robinson. I mean, you could just, uh, Dead Mouse, like so many, uh, you know, massive musicians and musicians in general uh, mm-hmm. deal with, with depression and kind of these, you're in a very vulnerable place when, mm-hmm. you're, when you're making something. And when it works, you're almost like, like holy shit! Like what? I, it, it it almost doesn't feel. It's like the uh, imposter syndrome, mm-hmm. right? When when something actually does work, and you're like, wow! Like what? This doesn't even make sense. I because you spend so much time sitting there analyzing it and critiquing it and combing over it and all this stuff, and and all of that is just comes from vulnerability. And so yeah, when you try something new, I think I think people forget that uh, musicians are artists, and you just you know it it all of it comes from from a place inside of you, you know, your emotions, your, your thoughts, your heart, your feelings, uh, your relationships, your interactions with people. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, I also think too, that, you know, we're in a time now where, um, it's really, you know, everybody kind of has this keyboard warrior type thing that, Mm -hmm. that, that, can be unleashed at any time and some people are better at reining it back I feel like uh, you know as we as we progress here with the internet you know it's only 20 years old or whatever <laughs> but um, I feel like people are starting to realize a little bit that like you can't I mean those people aren't like you see them you see their photos you see their Instagram you see their videos it all seems very Hollywood mm-hmm. but it's not uh, you know uh, the, the, the line between Hollywood uh, what it used to be and reality is is much more blurred these days, um, because now, uh, unlike you know, uh, 20 years ago, you know, you couldn't just send Tom Cruise a message and say, "I fucking hate your movies. Mm-hmm. You're trash. Like, never yeah. act again." Right? <laughs> but now you can like DM or or mm-hmm. you don't even have to DM them. You can just like you can just tag them in tag a them, post, tweet them, and DM they might them, see them. Comment, sure. yeah. I mean, and they might have you know half a million, whatever. But like, if you know. Uh, 40,000 people out of the, that, that 2 million followers are mm-hmm. unhappy with something and they do the same thing, all of a sudden you have a snowball effect of people that are, you know, uh, expressing their, their rage. And I feel like a lot of it is misguided too in a certain way. I feel like, this is my personal opinion, that a lot of people take their personal aggression and frustrations, right? Um, because I'm speaking from experience. Mm-hmm. I did this many years ago. Um, uh, when I was an unruly internet beast. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, guilty. Guilty as well, charged. Well, thanks for being honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it was much more innocent. I was just arguing with people about like yeah. cars and stupid shit like that. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, but still, it was like I was, I was upset with, uh, you know, I was frustrated with X, Y, Z thing. Didn't matter what it was. It could be my commute or my relationship or whatever. Um, and you just, you get on the, you spend so much time on the internet. I feel like people don't realize that you have to parse your emotions online and, and what you your interactions online just like you do in real life because they have very real consequences in the same way you know mm-hmm. what I mean um, you know if you were at a show here in Halcyon 
and you don't like you know, some new song that's played by your favorite, you're not going to stop the presses. This shit sucks. You know, yeah. you're not going to do that because because there's very physical, real like you know consequences. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just interesting to me that uh, that the the way that things like that are, have been going, and I'm glad to see a lot of people kind of taking the side of Getter and kind of artists like that. And of course, I mean, you know, we had Avicii pass away and, you know, I think it's unfortunate. It's like Tupac and Biggie, you know, dying. That's what it took to kill the kind of like West Coast, East Coast uh, rap beefs and that sort of thing. Um, and it's unfortunate that you kind of have to have this carnage to like yeah. things to get better. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Yeah. And hopefully it does. Cause like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how small, like uh, up and coming artists that gets hate, right? Of like one mm -hmm. out of his 200 fans or a big artist that gets that. I'm sure like we're all human. Mm. So if I'm like reading, if I'm some big artist and I'm looking through my YouTube comments, it's like for most people I can say it will phase them. Yeah. You can say like, oh yeah, you know, your words don't hurt me or whatever, but who's not going to feel somewhat shitty about putting their heart and soul into something and then just getting completely trashed. Right. Yeah. And I've heard, uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts and, and I'm a big fan of a uh, stand-up comedian and I've heard a lot of them uh, say that, you know, it, a lot of them are like, you just can't, you can't look at that stuff. You can't, you, you, you know, you can maybe peek, but just, just don't bother, you know, because it's, the, the problem is, is the bad comments, the negative kind of floats to the top mm -hmm. and that's the stuff that unfortunately really kind of affects you right it's like pe a million people could tell you they love you mm -hmm. but those four people that said you're the worst person on earth or they hate your your thing um that kind of like hits to the core you know mm -hmm. yeah that's unfortunate yeah i think that there could be almost like a, a and i'm sure there are like like pr people for like artists and stuff you know yeah. um, don't be mean guys don't be mean <laughs> don't be jerks <laughs> right it, like yeah i don't know it's just so easy to be freaking like internet warrior because like no one oh part of me like okay so like when i like literally when i saw that i like went to that girl's profile mm -hmm. the girl that like sent get her that message i was like well what a, what an ass i mean i didn't do anything but like <laughs> you like feel. The, the part of me that wants to be like yeah. why are you gonna be such an asshole for like right cause that's bullying it's basically bullying yeah, yeah. I, it's an internal struggle because i do the same thing you'll you'll see something like that where you're like that person was very clearly like kind of acted rashly and that was not a good thing right and then you want to say something to them because you feel like hey maybe i should point out that this person should you know and but then it's like then you become a keyboard then, yeah, warrior yeah, too yeah, and yeah it's you like, become <laughs> like the, okay so it's like okay fine i'm just gonna chill yeah right like but then it's like, but it's if, like if no uh, one says anything then that just like, goes uh, on like you know yeah. just keeps going <laughs> i know i know yeah it's crazy um and then you, you know like yeah i feel like uh i, I think what it's what it's going to take is it's just people are just going to have to start realizing that you just kind of have to police yourself a little bit. And a lot of it might come with maturity, you know, who knows? I, I didn't look at statistics, mm -hmm. but maybe a lot of that stuff was coming from people who are 18 years old. And I know when you're 18 years old, you're, you know, you've got, uh, you know, hormones running through your body and you just, everything is new and you're you being thrown shit. out into the world. And <laughs> it's like, it's a crazy, crazy time to be alive. Yes. Um, so I guess the, uh, you know, uh, lighten the mood a little bit. What are you, what are you excited about? Um, music wise? Uh, yeah shows what's uh what's tickling your fancy yeah what i'm excited about um i will say i'm excited to go to coachella in two weeks not mm. on work like so i used it's to rare go being to a, a double of joy things and these we, days. Said we never you know we don't we never just go to a club like on a non-work day like yeah, it's like right. weird right yeah. and so i'm excited to go to some festivals this year um not on work and the thing is I used to go all the time and then I started Neon Owl then every event is like work interview mm -hmm. networking like some sort of agenda which mm -hmm. is great like I've been able to meet so many people but I'm not gonna lie it takes the joy and the fun and like the free like roam around and mm -hmm. like in the grass like it takes away a lot of the fun and so um, my boyfriend and I are going to Coachella just for fun this in like two weeks so yeah. I'm looking forward to that I am also looking forward to, um, there's like, it's like two-sided. I'm looking forward to, and I'm anxious mm -hmm. and nervous and all the same, like all the same things about launching open door sessions in LA, mm -hmm. in New York, um, Europe, and then virtual. It's just like, wow. there's so much. That's why I told you my brain is fried <laughs> is 
I love it. Like I'm very driven by the why. Yeah. However, like the work and the details and every little thing that goes into it is not fun. Right. <laughs> I'll say it's not fun at all. Like even putting together the events here, it's it's not it's not fun. No. Until we're there right. and you see like the people connecting and like the value and the connections and the happy and like all this mm-hmm. stuff, then it makes it all worth it. Yeah. So that's my love hate relationship with like doing what I do. I love it. I'm very driven by it. And then like the process, it's like, bah! Mm-hmm. like you want to pull your hair out. Um, <laughs> and I cry a lot too. So, <laughs> um, she's a crier. <laughs> so that's what I'm looking forward to. I am also looking forward to, uh, moving back to New York. Oh, I'm um, from San Francisco originally, but New York's like one of my favorite places in the world. So I'm really looking forward to moving back there this uh, fall. Yeah. Late summer, early fall. Yeah, that's exciting. Uh, and then looking forward, we got a new collaboration in the works for the Dance Give Inspired Charity Line this morning. Nice. So I'm excited for that. Um, and just, yeah, launching a, a bunch more stuff yeah. this year. Super exciting. Yeah. That's why I like, uh, I, like I went to, I've been to Thailand and, and Bali and I like traveling because, you know, I could go to a festival and I'm going to run into a, a ton of people that, I, <laughs> that yeah. I know. And it's like, if I go out in Thailand, I don't know anybody. I, 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 I for yeah. sure don't know anybody. And I could just be drunk at a bar and, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like no responsibility. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the music in Thailand kind of sucks. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. Like, yeah. I've been, it's yeah. like San Francisco, like eight years ago. <laughs> it's like still like, yeah. you know, uh, Skrillex remixes and yeah. Know, well, like, they just press of the electro button. and yeah. And right. Then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was there, I think a year, year and a yeah. year and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, how are we doing on time? Uh, about an hour. You, you, I think you got somewhere to be, right? What kind of, I do, but yeah. you know, if there's any burning questions, like <laughs> I'm happy to answer them. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, do you have anything that uh, you you wanted to uh, talk about, or? Um, not really. I mean, it's just a chat. So thank you so much for having mm-hmm. me on. It's been yeah. awesome. I just met you like not that long ago. I know. And then here I am. Yeah. So <laughs> I would just say I'm super excited for everything's about to come and always looking forward to connecting with other people. We're mm-hmm. always looking mm-hmm. to collaborate, whether that's, you know, certain projects, events, networking sure. events. We're always looking for people that are passionate about writing, the music industry. So where, where can they reach you out if they, if people um, are, they uh, can, uh, well, they can visit neon or they can shoot me an email, Elaine, E L A I N E at neon co C O. Or you can just hit me up on Instagram. It's Elaine's World or Facebook. It's Sweet. Elaine's World as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've got, I've, I've noticed you you, uh, you have like a blog as well, right? Um, and you're always like, you know, uh, uh, carrying the camera around and it's fun. Yes, it's exciting. Yes, I like, I was resisting that for the longest time. I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Another thing to do, like aside from all the interviews. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm really passionate about branding and personal branding. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, because Neon Owl is, is my baby and Ray's baby, but he's like, hell no, I don't want to talk to DJs <laughs> and hell no, I don't want to be on camera. Yeah. So I'm a big advocate of like really promoting your brand because people at the end of the day don't really follow brands. They follow people and right. the story behind it. Yeah. And since I'm the one out there, I'm the one, I'm the one like talking to people, doing interviews. Uh, I was finally like pushed over the edge to do start my vlog on YouTube. Mm-hmm. It's Elaine's world as well. Um, and of course, along with all the other content we put out. Nice. Yeah. That's something I, I need to be uh, a little bit better at. I think I'm just, uh, I get so caught up. I, you know, I'm, I'm forgetting to kind of, you know, uh, create like a little bit of a brand personality. You know, yeah. it's like, uh, part, part of me is like, oh, like, do I really want to whip out my camera right now? You know, but it's like, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah. and a lot of it, to be honest, a lot of it, comes out right here this is you know you're getting an hour of me every every week yeah <laughs> uh, so you know um but uh yeah it's 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 uh it's definitely something you have to kind of like chip away at a little bit every yeah. day yeah. um but anyway yeah we should uh we should, we should do this again i feel yeah. like we can we can talk uh, forever about yes, you know yes, music stuff and uh we'll bring more pr- artists promotion. on too that yeah. would be great totally collab on some of that absolutely yeah. yeah 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 and again you know if you uh need if you think i can help in any way for uh you know neon owl or uh, open door sessions, you know, by all means, uh, let me know. Awesome. I'll hold um, you to that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, do you, uh, you get a website? Or yeah, yeah. So uh, neonowl.co or my own website is elainehuang.co. 
So dot co is like the, the cool way to go. It's, yes. it's where the cool kids are now. Dropping the M. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping the M. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right. Well, so uh, again, we are here at Halcyon in San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco is one of best one of San Francisco's best nightclubs. Uh, I got to thank Gia, Ria, Lena, Leah, Gina, and Jojo. <laughs> it's, it's a like, tongue twister. <laughs> I know. Uh, for letting us host here. And uh, again, this is the voice of electronic music podcast with Elaine Huang and uh, this is episode 18. You can find us on all the major platforms SoundCloud, Spotify, MixCloud, all all the clouds. Stitcher, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, we will see you guys on the next one and uh, thanks for tuning in. Bye. See you guys Cheers. next time. <laughs>